the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Hello and welcome back. Today is Sunday, July 4th, 2021, and this is the Sports Vote Campaign Update. So I apologize if a couple of things here are mentioned multiple times. I'm reading this straight out of my notes without any edits. So sometimes things appear twice in here if I see a subsequent point or another news story. So China is clamping down hard on cryptocurrencies, um, as are several other countries. You're going to see more and more of that. It looks like the central banks and policymakers are finally starting to understand what I've been saying for a decade, that this is a threat to national sovereignty. So you're going to see this tighten and tighten. A uh, big story, the NCAA uh, players are now going to be able to actually get paid for their for their work, uh, which is going to completely reshape the landscape of sports. Uh, it does open up a lot of opportunities for us in terms of the future because uh, the college issue was a, was a problem. And this is going to turn the college sports uh, leagues into much more professional looking uh, se- uh, setups, more commercial so that's uh, that's a definitely we've been talking about this for many years, and it's finally come to pass. So a couple of questions about how uh, how is it going to work if we uh, find a, find or create a league or esports league to uh, to go for a fundraise on the third instance of the engine? The answer is that we would revise the no action request, which was sent to the SEC and the CFTC, which is still pending after more than five years. We would revise that, and we would also um, have the league itself be the uh, be the one uh, sending the letter co-signed by us to the SEC. This is sort of uh, what was going on with the NRHL before that was sabotaged, and then subsequently coronavirus kicked in. Um, and why we don't talk about these things publicly anymore, lesson learned. There are people out there who are trying to, to mess this up through any means possible. So as far as revenue sharing to the leagues, and I'm going to state this again, uh, this continues to become a, a false talking point in the public domain. At no point have I ever in the past said that we would need external income from the leagues or anywhere else to make the model work. I've never said that. That's not true. That's a false claim, 100% false claim. And as it stands right now, the market is operating under the nonprofit, which gives us fair use treatment of the intellectual property. Um, basically, the whole pra- everything that we did to restart the market and the Hollywood efforts and all of that were to kick the market off and get it running, which is the case, and which is, you know, you can clearly see it trades between, you know, ten to, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of contracts a day. But with the named leagues on there, in order for us to, uh, you know, to put it into the final mode, we would have to do the revenue sharing. You know, you, when you move from the nonprofit model to the for profit model, we would need to remit uh, the royalties, as we've said, uh, you know, for 50 per, 50% of our income to the affected league. That's been the, the stated policy for more than a decade. So, in that combination of moving from the nonprofit to the for profit structure, we would have to begin paying those royalties. So, that's, that's the story there. Um, so see the uh, see the bonus margin. There's a video uh, concerning what is bonus margin. See that on the uh, Sports Vote Campaign YouTube channel if you want to understand basically how do we get from the pilot market to the real money market. You know how does that happen? What is the effect of bonus margin, and how do we basically get the bonus margin out of the system, and then move the pilot market into the real market. The word pilot is exactly that. It's a pilot. It's okay. It's a pilot to move from the uh, current state to the final state. Um, all right. So the uh, the purpose. Okay. So I covered that. Um, gambling. The gambling market. The total addressable market is not growing. Okay. For gambling, it is not. It is basically a now a fight between all of these different brands. Uh, between each other and also a fight with the offshore market, which I've covered many times. I'm not going to go through this again. Um, that the, the offshore market is going to have a permanent advantage as long as it's allowed to operate and there's no uh, no enforcement of the Wire Act. 
Okay, so um, Canada's news about single game betting, uh, that's a nothing burger. Um, you know, they've had gambling up there for a while now. It didn't affect the price of any of the publicly traded uh, sports gambling operations in any meaningful way. So that tells you right there. Um, the SEC case has moved uh, or is, in the, is, is going to be moving in the next few weeks into the mediation uh, process. As we indicated in the 2019 press release, uh, the court has signed off on uh, we both both sides have agreed to send it to mediation. So that's where it's headed. That is an important development. Uh, you can see the the minute uh, entry in the um, in the ASM notice board. El Salvador talking about or actually moving to Bitcoin as legal tender. That's a huge mistake. You're going to see that's the case over time. Uh, I'm not the only one saying that by any means. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, a desperate attempt to do, get something going, but it's uh, going to go very badly. Okay, so um, facts are stubborn things. Facts are stubborn things. Um, part of Trump's big lies come crashing down this week with the indictment of his companies. Um, for tax fraud and among, among, other, among of many other things, and this is really just the beginning of it. $3.6 billion Bitcoin heist. Um, yeah, well, th this is going to keep happening. Um, you know, we'll see if they're able to recover any of this or whatever. It's... Uh, you know, it's the clampdown is going to have to happen if uh, if national governments and, and regimes want to remain intact. Uh, you you cannot have three thousand six hundred million dollars disappear like this. So, I mean, think about that three thousand six hundred million dollars. Um, investing in gambling is investing in a dangerous vice from the past. Um, period. Nothing more to say there. The economy is about half recovered. Uh, from where it was before the pandemic hit early in 2020, about half. We're about halfway through. The $1 trillion infrastructure plan is kicking back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I'm watching that very, very closely um, to see what elements there are. Oftentimes, you don't find out until the law is completely passed. But um, there are some indications. I've seen some of the, the detail outlines, uh, or the outlines, basically, not the details, but the outlines of what they have in mind. And um, I, I think we're going to be able to find some some things inside here that we can plug into to uh, put forth sports investing as a part of the infrastructure. So I'm watching that very closely. Uh, Elon Musk moved into a uh, portable building, basically, in Texas uh, to, you know, doesn't own any more houses or is in the fact in the final stages of disposing a big place in San Francisco that's really for events. Um, as I've said many times, uh, you know, pe people misunderstand this kind of a personality. Uh, he's really all about the mission and the resources that he has available to him are just for that purpose. Um, and I guess some somewhere along the line, he realized there was no sense in having all these properties. Probably other people talked him into it. And he doesn't care. I mean, uh, he just doesn't care at all. He sleeps on, the, you know, even long before this particular event, he's, you know, my friend, uh, longest friend in the world, the, one of the original, well, very few first employees said, you know, the guy sleeps on the couch. So in, in the office, many, 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 many nights, I mean, actually, most of the time he's in the office. So, okay. So anyway, um, keep an eye on the, uh, the media releases thread. I, that's where I'm going to post any, um, release dates for books, uh, podcasts, videos, etc. It's going to go in there in one master thread. Um, the, today, July 4th, I'll be releasing the first installment of um, the title. It's called It Began in the 1970s. Uh, I'm going to explain the entire history uh, of, of this idea because I'm now able to see, as uh, Steve Jobs said in, in one of his famous speeches, that you, you don't uh, often put the pieces together while they're happening, but you can look back and understand why things happened the way they did. And I can see the seeds of, of the development of all sports market going back uh, to childhood until I, you know, I was at five, six years old. So I'm going to cover that in a separate series. Uh, first installment goes out today. So uh, the NFT market is still very hot. Uh, we put out the first one. If you're interested, go to sportsharenft.com. Uh, it's still very hot. There was a $5.4 million um, sale uh, recently, uh, and I looked at the 
looked at it and I'm still absolutely baffled by all of this. But anyhow, um, so the first one we put out is the is an NFT of the original sketches that I made back in Costa Rica, literally 20 years ago. It was in the summer of 20, uh, 2001, 2001. The Fed is watching stable coins um, very closely. More, um, that's good because that's actually the real, it's an even bigger threat than the um, the other sea of, of other made up money forms. The stable coins are trying to claim parity with the dollar, and um, that's the one that really is is could, could be the real problem. Because if they try to equate, may, say it's the same thing as the dollar, keep the price the same as the dollar, it becomes a uh, a cash leak. Uh, you know, le- cash will leak that direction towards those stable coins because people think they're really dealing with dollars, which they're not. Okay, so uh, second quarter dividends were posted yesterday or day before yesterday. The figures are on the notice board. I've also posted the um, the statistics of of the World Vision contributions from 2013 until the present time. It's been 10 percent of the um, of the gross donation income top line. No uh, games being played there. And that money, uh, the reason behind that and all, I will explain further in the um, this, the nineteen seventy. It began in the seventies podcast. I mean, this is all the same stories, different parts of the same story. But I'll explain all that. So the net um, uh, benefit through corporate matching, because the ten percent was multiplied between eight and twelve times, uh, depending on the period of time. It, it kind of goes up and down. Right now, it's it's at ten times. So it's exactly equal. So when a dollar comes in, it's basically multiplied back out at a dollar. So, you know, we put out into public uh, benefit. Right now, it's going to educational supplies in the United States. We put it out equally to what we get. So if we get a dollar, we give a dollar through these matching programs. So that benefit has been between about 1.5 and 2.2, I think it is, 2.2 million dollars across the restart period of ASM, you know, this current... um, iteration of it, the present one, between $1.5 and, and $2.2 million, which is more than we've actually taken in uh, the whole time. So finally, um, the dividend reserves, and you can look at this for yourself, the dividend reserves are um, substantial and they remain substantial, and that, that that's going to be the case. They'll actually grow uh, more than likely over time. Uh, they won't even diminish uh, they'll grow over time, so there'll be there'll be static cash balances there, which will become very very large over time, and that money is investable. And even if it's invested at um, you know standard bank account rates or very very conservative T bills or something along that, uh, you know that are fractions of a percent or a percent, not not aggressively invested but very conservatively invested, that money will. Um, will add now this is my proposition i've just put this before alper i believe this is the right move that whatever those returns are those passive incomes are to the dividend reserves we should split that money in half uh half of it will go to that dividend reserve and half will go to the corporate income uh, i think that's the right the right balance and the result of that independent of the fact that i can show that the asm model is not a ponzi scheme even without chain without this element but with this element, you have external dividend income, which is passive. And if it's anything above zero, if it's anything above zero, if it's a penny, okay, if it's even just a penny flowing in, then you're augmenting those reserves from external sources, not from the leagues. I've never said that. That has never. I've never said that one time. Okay, even in Costa Rica, there were. We should do this and that and this and that to supplement the reserves. Otherwise, the model will fail. First of all, that's false. Okay, that's not true. But even if it were true, which it's not true, um, any augmentation of that dividend reserve is uh, it defeats that utterly defeats that claim. So, I think that the right thing for the company and the right thing for the sports shares is to split any of that income. Uh, passive income, investment income on the dividend reserves equally between the sports shares themselves and then the corporate income. Drop, you know, put that into corporate income, which would of course accrue to shareholder value, company shareholder value. So half the half the money accrues to company shareholder value and half the money accrues to the sports shares themselves, which utterly defeats the Ponzi scheme argument in a very simply a simple way to explain it. 
And it will also increase the value of the sports shares because they will be taking in additional uh, revenues from these passive sources. So that's all for today. Um, Thank you for your time and attention and have a great 4th of July weekend. Bye now.